So yesterday I showed you some extremely early footage of the brand new Turning Tides DLC that's coming to Battlefield 1 and today I'm going to list all the details of that DLC that DICE has released so far. Basically this video is going to tell you everything you need to know. Last night the Battlefield website was updated with some more information so let's get cracking and get you guys up to date. Firstly, four maps will be making their way into this DLC. This is a standard sized update. Rather than the Russian DLC, which had six maps, this will be limited to just four. This is what we had in the French DLC to begin with, and it follows the same pattern as many previous Battlefield games. Now you've seen two of these maps already. One of them is called Cape Hells, and the other, Achi Baba. Both of these maps are set in the Dardanelles region during the British invasion of Gallipoli and they feature Anzac soldiers fighting alongside British soldiers against the Ottoman Empire. Both of these maps will be dropping in December. The other two are focused much more heavily on naval warfare. Zeebrugge and Heligoland Bight are maps for vehicle players including lots of planes and lots of boats although there will be space for infantry warfare as well. Both of these maps will arrive in January. That's right, this DLC Turning Tides is split in half. I think DICE is trying to spread out the new content a little bit rather than dumping it all in one go. Held back for January as well is the British Royal Marines faction which will feature on these two maps and it seems that the British fighting at Gallipoli on the other two maps will be a variant of the current British Army I believe. Heligoland Bight will focus around a place called Rocky Cove and it presents a huge open expanse of water for proper naval battles to occur. The British Navy will face off against the German Navy using airships, destroyers and dreadnoughts to try and fight for control. There will be a space for infantry play on the land of Rocky Cove but the map focuses more on naval battles. Zeebrugge is set during the British raid of a Belgian port whilst waves are rising high out at sea. There might be a chance that this is a night raid as well and that will take on a totally different type of combat here. That's if we can believe the concept art. There will be air, sea and infantry combat available but like Heligoland it will be more naval focused. With DICE splitting this DLC into two halves, it seems they've settled for more infantry focused battles at Gallipoli in December and then more naval battles in January which will mean the DLC has distinct settings for different types of players. There will be one new operation with this DLC, it will be called Gallipoli and it will join the Cape Hells and Achi Baba maps together making a combined air, land and sea battle. The British forces have to storm the beaches at Cape Hells and push on up the hill taking trenches and weapon caches on their way and then on to Achi Baba where the battle will appear to go full infantry and the Ottomans will have to use their mountain outposts to try and stop the push forwards. Moving on to weapons now, I showed you six new weapons in my video the other day. It's now been confirmed that six is the final number for the Turning Tides DLC, at least for primary weapons. There will be two other melee weapons coming in this DLC as well. One being the Naval Cutlass and the other is the Grappling Hook. Now we know where this thing is landing. I'm excited to see what kind of brutal animations DICE will be cooking up for that, but I imagine the Cutlass will use similar animations to the Saber. The six standard weapons are the M1917 Trench Carbine, that's essentially a C96 Carbine, the Machine and Pistol M1912 P16, that's the stupidly fast firing pistol that I basically said was an Automatico pistol, the Farquhar Hill Rifle for the Medic, that's a British weapon, the M1917 Browning Machine Gun for the support, and the Carcano M91 Carbine and the Type 38 Arisaka Rifles for the Scout class. Looks like no new secondary weapons in this DLC but somebody did spot an anti-air variant of the rocket gun in the playtest the other day and I assume this will be a new gadget for all players of Battlefield 1 rather than being limited to just the Turning Tides DLC. The shell that it fires differs slightly from the regular rocket gun in that it will detonate in close proximity to aircraft as opposed to needing a direct hit. 
From my limited testing of the gadget, however, it seems to do very similar damage to the standard rocket gun, with the added benefit of needing to be slightly less accurate to hit your target. Now, I think this will be a welcome gadget to infantry players who sometimes can feel a little bit hard done by on some of the more open maps in Battlefield 1, but I assume pilots won't be so happy. I hope DICE can balance this effectively and not cause too much trouble for pilots whilst keeping infantry happy, and I fully expect this to be a new gadget for everyone in Battlefield 1. If it is locked into this DLC, well, that wouldn't be a great decision. Two new vehicles were confirmed in the blog post yesterday. One we already knew about because it's been in the description of the TLC for some time. That's the Coastal Class Airship and the other being an L-Class Destroyer. That's a rather big boat. The airship won't be the same as the behemoth that we're used to seeing on other maps. It's described as being more nimble, so you can maneuver it around a little bit, and I expect it to be faster as well. It will be smaller, and I think it's going to take the place almost of a helicopter in Battlefield 1, which of course Battlefield 1 couldn't have before because helicopters were nowhere near being invented at this time. It will have space for three gunners and a pilot. So on those more naval maps, which I spoke about before, this could almost be like an airborne tank. The L-Class Destroyer, however, that thing sounds like an absolute beast. And it will be great to see such a large, viable vehicle back in the Battlefield series. We, of course, already have the Dreadnought. That's absolutely massive, but I don't consider that a proper vehicle. It is a behemoth, after all, and it only comes along once in a while. Now, it's going to have plenty of space for players, similar to the airship, I think, but it will come with cannons, torpedoes, AA guns, and sea mines as well. This is definitely a vehicle for the all-out naval maps. DICE has also confirmed that a new Elite class is coming with the Turning Tides DLC. This is called the Infiltrator. There's a picture on screen now of what roughly the character will look like. I mean, obviously, minus the body. The description for this new Elite class does make for interesting reading, however. Hide in plain sight and move faster across the battlefield with the new Infiltrator Elite class. This strategic kit allows you to take advantage of a permanent sprint boost while calling in artillery strikes and deploying a mobile spawn for friendly troops. It seems DICE has found a way to reintroduce the spawn beacon into Battlefield 1. This is a gadget that DICE removed from Battlefield 1 after having it in previous titles, and I have to admit, it's great to see it back. The Elite will be able to set it down in a strategic location, and it'll allow teammates to spawn in as reinforcements. The permanent sprint boost is something we've already seen on the Trench Raider Elite class. He runs faster than most other standard infantry, but the kicker for me is the artillery strike. If it's anything like the mortar strike from Bad Company 2, I'm going to want to play with this kit all of the time. I'm really excited to get my hands on this one and give this new Elite a go. DICE has also stated that for non-premium players, there will be a free trial of the Turning Tides DLC running in December that will allow anyone to jump on and test out the maps and get a feel for the DLC. This is good news for everyone, as more players will be in the DLC servers, so anyone can enjoy the game for a longer period. Premium players will still retain exclusive features like the new weapon unlocks, the ability to spawn in new DLC vehicles, and work towards new ribbons medals and other in-game progression items. So this free trial is only limited to the maps. And I think that's just about it at the moment. Checking my list, I don't think I've got anything else to mention. This is shaping up to be another awesome DLC for Battlefield 1, and I cannot wait to jump back on the CTE and play some more of it. From the 17th of October, DICE will be running tests of two maps, Cape Hells and Achi Baba on the CTE for both PC and console players so that they can give feedback on how these maps flow. Make sure your CTE is up to date and get in there and help test some stuff out. But thank you very much for watching today and now you know everything so far about the Turning Tides DLC. I think I'm most excited for the two Gallipoli maps, the Anzac Soldiers and probably the six new weapons. Leave me some comments down below, let me know what you think of all of this information, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.